inside that sterile environment of the MGM Grand Conference Center where every single person inside what they call the bubble is tested and cleared. One person was not cleared, and that's why we had a change in what was to be our main event. No Jose Pedraza, Nick Lipierre. Instead, it is this guy getting a big opportunity against Gabe Flores. That is Jose Ruiz. And Ruiz has experienced heartbreaking loss. He survived a childhood in Honduras that was grueling. He told us he doesn't like to think much about what he was informed as a boy, that his mother passed away with HIV. When you ask him what happened in his life, he details it. He says, I was taken in by a sister, then left with another sister, then his grandmother, and yet everywhere he went in life, there was death, there was despair, it followed him. He landed on his feet. He was homeless and hungry, left with no options, said, I was about to start selling drugs on the street just to try to survive. But at 16, a boxing trainer saved his life, gave him shelter, gave him purpose, gave him a sport. An amateur career, came to the USA 18 months ago, lives in Miami, and this is 27th Pro Fight. Huge opportunity for him. Tail the tape presented by Geico. And you say Flores has the height advantage. He also is better with the jab. Look at the jab connect percentage, nearly 31% to Ruiz at 19%. And here comes Gabe, Gabriel Flores Jr. Think about the stages and development and the promotional growth in boxing because they're so unique. You know, as thrilling as it is to see a Terrence Crawford or a Canelo or a Tyson Fury on top of the world, there's something extremely exciting in watching that ride of a rising popular homegrown prospect, and that is what we've seen with Gabe Flores. We saw it in Stockton, California, where he comes from. 209, as he probably says. But now he's moved to Vegas, and he's looking to deliver on everything to become a world champion down the road. He is ready for the main event. Ruiz and Gabe Flores, and here's Mark Chinook. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside the MGM Grand Conference Center in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Boxing, presented by Bob Arum's Top Rank. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the lightweight division. Our judges at ringside, Patricia Morse Jarman, Dave Moretti, and Steve Weisfeld. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Tony Weeks. This is Boxing. This is Top Rank. And this is the main event. Fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 132.4 pounds, wearing black trunks with white trim. He enters the ring with a record of 21 wins, two losses, three draws, 14 wins coming by way of knockout. From Limo, Honduras, Josec Escorpion Ruiz. Fighting out of the red corner, he weighed in at 132.4 pounds, wearing red trunks, with black and platinum trim. He brings a perfect record of 17 wins, no losses, six wins by way of knockout from Stockton, California. Stockton's king, Gabriel Flores Jr. Okay, gentlemen, Cabellos, you already received your instructions. Usted received your instructions. I want a good, clean fight. You're going to want to play Olympia. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Escucha me, cuídate. Listos? Ready? Let's go. If you want to be part of the crowd noise we're providing tonight during this broadcast, you can use Hear Me Cheer on any device. Go to ESPN.HearMeCheer.com to participate. First scheduled 10-round fight in the career of Gabriel Flores, Jr. Right to work with that jab. That's the punch you want the young fighter throwing early in a fight, especially against an aggressive guy, a tough guy like Ruiz. There's no rush. 
This is his first scheduled 10 round fight. You've got time. Take your time. Get yourself in a rhythm and, sh and set your shots up. Listen, Ruiz has a lot of experience. He's been 10 rounds more than a dozen times. You know, he don't look like much, but he does have some sneaky punches over the top. So Flores is going to have, he's going to stay relaxed, but he got to have his eyes wide open. Ruiz has two right losses now, worth like decision Reese's losses, sick. and then he had the three draws. The oddity when you look at his record. Had three draws stop, 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 in a four-fight stretch yeah, in his career. Out, yeah. Reese is starting to drop the, the jab down to the body. That just means that he's looking for something over the top, and I'm thinking it's a right hand he's looking for. that combination moments ago. There's the left hook, comes back with it. Tess, what I liked about that sequence from Flores was, was that, what I loved about that sequence was, was when he spent out, he didn't just dance out. He actually spent out and actually fought. That's what I like. He got active with his hands. Beautiful work by Flores. Indeed. No, Reese is really hard to hit. You know, he stays low. He bends at the waist. You know, he's trying to be a, a small man in there. You know, he is a shorter guy, but he gets down, and it can be a little difficult to catch a guy like that. There's a big shot over the top he's been looking for. There Just was a missed. lot to like in this opening round with Gabe Flores Jr., a lot. And that's ha! making somebody happy because that is a shot of the sports book right now downstairs at the MGM Grand as they are watching the Flores Ruiz main event and somebody is watching with great interest because they're laying a 187 K to win 4,000 <laughs> that's insane Tess to win $4,000 I don't know if I like that bet at all wow listen the return of boxing last week and this week and we did have an upset on tuesday night i mean the main event had an upset on tuesday night and josh greer was in against a live dog we told you the sports book was watching mike plenty of money come in all afternoon and he was about plus 275 stop, 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 when he stop. scored the upset the other night now this is a massive dog in ruiz but as things go along in the coming weeks and next month and you know gyms reopen and you're able to get better matchmaking you're going to see a lot of tight lines at that sports book not the case tonight somebody putting down one hundred eighty seven thousand dollars on flores there's a right hand and floor the young unbeaten yeah and flores has been very elusive in there flashing the jab occasionally switching up the rhythm on it fainting you know he's fighting in a loose position he's very comfortable right now Nice uppercut right there from Flores. As Ruiz came forward, Dre, he was able to time that left uppercut. Yeah, a lot of times for a veteran fighter, it takes them three or four rounds to kind of get their range and try to time a faster, you know, young fighter who moves a lot. And that's what Ruiz is doing right now. Oh, the left hook! Right there. Left hook scores! Right hand follows! And a knockdown Tres, scored by Gabe Flores Jr. Cinco, seis, siete, ocho, venga para acá. And Dre, he has time to work with here. Over a minute to go. Yes. Another left hook rings in. Can he finish him in spectacular fashion? Just missed with that left hand. Oh, great instruction from his father telling him to go down to the body. That's going to open it up. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. I got you. Flores is looking very strong tonight. His punches are landing heavier than I've ever seen him. 
and he's still got time to get this knockout with 35 seconds left on this round. Off to a sensational start. Ruiz trying to steady himself, leaning forward. I ain't gonna lie, gentlemen, this is the sharpest that I've ever seen Flores Jr. Move to Vegas, concentrating on nothing but the career. And stop, it stop, looks stop. great here against Ruiz. Knockdown scored in round two. Stronger, more powerful version in game for us tonight. Dre, show us that knockdown. What a knockdown came from Flores' favorite punch. Faint right there. Fainting Ruiz out of position. Boom! Right there on the point of the chin. You see Ruiz do a funny dance. And down he went. It was the, the mm. faintest shot right there. That opened up that big shot right there. Ruiz never really saw it coming. Stop, stop, stop. That nope. had a lot of power and, and speed behind it. I have not seen Gabriel Flores look this strong. Not anywhere, you know, before tonight. Boy, yeah. power, speed, and accuracy with that left hook, and then just followed him with on, the right Ashley, hand to seal it. And Fuck that was a knockdown stop, score, stop. hurting no, no. Ruiz in round number two. Timmy, power punches right Out. now. Flores has landed 20 to Ruiz landing six. Oh, yeah, it's easy pickings for him. You got a guy that's directly in front of him. You know, heavy on the front foot. All he got to do is dance and, and make him run, him run him into shots. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's setting traps in the ring on Ruiz. But, gentlemen, the reason why he looks so good is the transition to Las Vegas. There's better fighters in Las Vegas, better sparring in Las Vegas, and that's how you get better. It's in the gym. That's why he looks so good tonight. And then doubles up the left hook, went to the body, tried to come upstairs with it. I think it's just his father having the right mentality about his son. You see, when we read the bios, you hear the things, you see the quotes that his dad says, and he said, look, man, my son is good, but we're still working on all the aspects of his game, outside, mid-range, in close. That lets me know that that's a team that's not overly impressed with the young floor. They know they got to keep working, and when you keep working, you start putting on performances like this. Bernardo, what about the other corner? Moro Fernandez is saying, look, we can't just go one punch at a time. He's a little asleep out there, and you can't afford to do that against a quick and disciplined fighter. We've got to match his rhythm, and for him, his best defense is his offense, so he's got to get going. So that is what Jose Ruiz is charged with. Works work from the jab of Flores. Joe Ruiz is the kind of veteran that if you let his engine get revving, he can cause you some trouble. Flores is doing the right thing tonight. He's not even allowing Ruiz to get started. Boy, there is a lot to like with the young generation between 126 pounds and 135 pounds right now in the sport, isn't there? Yes, it is. Stop, stop, nope. Let him up. Start around four of our main event. Chance to catch up with Mark. You know, when it comes to Gabe Flores, he might be one of these guys, the bigger the stage, the more attention is focused on him, the better he gets. There was that night a couple years ago in Stockton with that one-punch knockout. And then tonight, according to our notes, Osek Ruiz has never been down until right there. Put him down in round number two. It was a left hook. And then he chased him with a right hand, but the left hook was so impressive. And there's a sweeping right hand from Ruiz as Flores was backing up. He tried to come in with left hook of his own. Put that hand up on the inside, though. Put that left hand on the inside. Pick it up. I just love that that the footwork of Flores. You know, as soon as Ruiz get in front of him, what does he do? He gets in position to strike. He gets his distance. He starts moving. Occasionally ch trying to use the check hook to catch him on the way in. Just great work by Flores tonight.
Stop, 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 stop. That no. right hand right there was thrown, and it missed because Flores rode with that punch. That's a veteran move. Oh, good combination. Works behind the jab, there put the right again. hand in there, finish with the left. Mm. One thing I had to learn, Tess, when I started going more rounds and I'm facing veterans like, like Ruiz is you got to stay focused throughout the course of a fight. You start having your way through four, five, six rounds, and you can easily go to sleep for just one second. And a veteran will take punishment all night long just to line you up for one shot. So that's where Flores is right now. He's got to learn to stay focused, stay locked in, don't get tired of doing what you're doing, see this thing all the way through. You know, Dre, what I find interesting about that comment is when you're dealing with young athletes, they get so enamored of talking about physical traits. Like, well, what is somebody? You give a scouting court. This guy's fast. This guy's strong. Focus is a trait. Focus is a skill that you want to have. And it is critical in this game. But young fighters and that's have to realize that, right? You're right, Joe. Yes. And that's something as a coach you got to work on with your fighter in the gym. When he's having his way stop, stop. or he starts to get late in a sparring session and you see him losing focus, you got to stay on him. Stay locked in. Stay focused. That way when you tell him that in the fight, he's not looking at you like you're speaking another language. Well, let me just let me just make this live for the, the people at home. How do you fall asleep when you're driving? There's a lot more stuff going on when you're driving than when you are in the ring. You lose focus. You got to stay concentrated. Gabe Flores, after that fourth round, heard from his father saying, "This better be a better round. Stay focused. Needed to be better." Timmy, it's because Ruiz was able to land that right hand in that last round. Yes, he was able to land that right hand, and this is the only time Ruiz will have success if Flores allows him to. And right here, what does Flores do? He misjudged distance. He thought he was out. Ruiz said, "No, you're not. Take this overhand right." Round five of our main event: the undefeated 20-year-old Gabe Flores, who signed a promotional contract with Top Rank when he was still in high school. There he is. Close it. Close it. Work with the jab. He tries to bring the right hand behind it. That's why when I hear sometimes people try to rush a young fighter just because they see some skill or they see some ability. I just kind of sit back and I chuckle because it's levels to this. You don't you don't rush into deeper waters. You walk into deeper waters. And I like the pace that top rank is taking Gabe Flores right now. Now 17 and 0. I mean, matchmaking becomes critical with that. It's everything, Chuck. It really is. And top rank is the best. And has been the best for a long, long time. Without question. A la Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather early in their careers. You know, we don't talk about matchmaking often. You know, those guys, Bruce, you know, those guys, Goodman, Brad Goodman, those guys have the keen eye for boxing. Sharp eye for boxing. They know matchups. They know fights. <laughs> Brad Goodman, Bruce Trampler, long time right hand men to Bob Arum and Todd DeBuff. The top rank group taking the right path, taking the right course. Every step in that path is critical when you have this kind of talent. Not just the talent in the ring, but Gabe Flores is. <laughs> Already proven to be a marketing dynamo in his hometown. Very likable. He's got a great backstory. Gabe Flores also has James Prince, the manager, and Josh Dubin, Antonio Leonard. All those guys were on my team. They worked with Floyd. They're experienced guys. So their expertise, their wisdom, their knowledge, along with top rank, all Flores has schools to go out there and shine because they're going to put them in the right position. Yeah, I mean, he's got every resource and tool around him. And now it's up to Gabe Sr. on the training side, Gabe Jr. inside the ropes to make it all happen. According to CompuBox, Gabe Flores Jr. has outlanded Ruiz 53 to 24 as we start round number six of our main event. Andre Ward sees the fight this way on his scorecard. 
the 10-8 round in the second round with the left hook right hand that scored the knockdown. Bernardo was just listening into the corner of Gabe Flores, father and son. What do you have for us, Bernie? Now Gabe Flores Sr. told me, look, I need him to double up the jab and then follow up. And he needs to wear down the body. Had he been going to the body like I asked him, I think he'd be out of here by now. He's only landing 15% of his so body true. punches. Tim, I heard that so true out of you. You always like guys. My hands so are hands free. Yeah. Stop, stop, stop. You have to go downstairs, especially when you're going 12 rounds or 10 rounds. You have to break these guys down physically. You got to take some from them. Stop, stop. Stop, stop. Stop, stop. Push it back. Hold that ground. Let's go. Hold that ground. Let's go. Hold that ground. Let's go. Hold that ground. Push, push, push. There you go. Hold that ground. His father wanted that time. His father. Underneath. Underneath. Flores Sr., he wants more activity from his son. He said, come in behind the high guard and put the pressure on Ruiz. He wants him to knock him out or at least try. Stop, stop. Just the speed, the sheer the speed right there, of Lord. Flores Jr. Too much. Too much. He got some steam in those punches tonight, though, Tim. He does, Dre. Oh, he does. Oh, yeah, he does on, have some steam in those punches. He does. Mm. That left hook again. There it is. Flores trying to be a little bit more consistent with his punches. Instead of one, two, he's trying to hit him with three, four. Hold it, hold it, hold it. High guard and hold it. Flores still has to stay alert because he's still facing a veteran fighter who's just looking for one shot. Seven scheduled through ten. There was a moment in round two where we didn't know if we'd see the end of round two when Gabe Flores scored the knockdown. Had Ruiz hurt. He has been in control throughout the evening with just a few moments of defensive laps. The right hand in round four from Ruiz. But he has controlled throughout, landing 62 of 231 punches thrown, according to CopyBox. Flores, in the first six rounds, he set the table, he has served the food, and now his dad, Flores Sr., is asking his son to eat. Sit down. You know you can hurt this guy. Be smart. But it's time to try to get him out of there. Put your punches together. Let's see if young Flores can follow instructions. How will he do it, Dre, if he is to? I think he's just got to be in that wheelhouse, the wheelhouse of Ruiz. You know, it takes a little bit of courage to be there. Uh, you may get hit with some shots. There may be some shots that whiz past. He's got to be willing to stay there. I, I agree with Flores Sr. He doesn't have to move as much. He's giving up more energy than he should. It's just an attitude thing. Like when you hear Flores Sr. talking to Flores Jr., it's not real technical. He's calling him boy. He, 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 that's not a disrespectful thing. He's trying to call out the fighting spirit in his son saying, hey, you got this, dude. Go ahead and take care of your business. Let's go home. I'll tell you how he can stop him. He hit him with everything he possibly can in the kitchen sink up top. He needs to go down and test the body. Mm -hmm. That's what he needs to do. He does that, he better his chances in breaking this boy down and getting him up out of there. Timmy, he's landed 44 power punches, but only 13% to the body. Tim, you're taking my line. I'm normally the guy calling for guys to go to the body. Now you're taking my line calling for guys to go to the body. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's obvious. <laughs> Look at every shot. It's a, it's a head shot. I can count them. Why don't you count them at home? Yeah, how no, many head shots and how many body shots you're going to see? That was four right there. Start leading and finish it. 
This is the 10 round fight. This is this is what he needs to go back to the gym and develop now. Going down to his opponent's bodies. Boy, can Ruiz take a shot? Let's see if he that does body go for you. Body. Want that stick? Want that stick? There it is. Last Test punch those you guts ever out. Your professional career, Dre, right? I threw a few. Well, especially right at the very end. <laughs> Yeah, boy. Ha! Getting a good look at Gabe Flores fighting just above that junior lightweight limit tonight, but a very promising prospect at 130 pounds. A division that we're going to see a lot of on our network in the coming weeks. Uh, reports of Oscar Valdez coming back in July. Of course, Jamel Herring's going to have a title defense. We're going to see Miguel Burchelt coming up a week from Saturday from Mexico City. And you think about, you know, Diaz and Farmer and some of the guys that are fighting at 130 pounds, guys. And there is no need to rush Gabe Flores Jr. No need at all No, to rush there's him. levels. Not at all. No. Not at all. There's, there's levels, like Dre said. There's levels to this game. He's at a certain level right now. I do see something, though, Gabe Flores. He got to get comfortable inside the kitchen. You was talking about eating uh, uh, later, Dre. Dre, you was talking about eating. Well, he needs to get comfortable inside the kitchen. That's inside the pocket, ladies and gentlemen. We talk about some of those veteran names, and I mentioned earlier, you know, between 126 and 135, when you think about Shakur and then at 135, Tiafimo Lopez, you just go a couple years beyond the age and development that we see with Flores, and you realize guys can become superstars. You realize it, it can happen there at a certain young age in your young 20s, and, you know, more and more reports coming out about Lopez and Lomachenko getting ready to get rescheduled here late summer early fall that is going to be thrilling yes it is Have you counted the body shots yet, Dre? I'm waiting on you to let me know. I don't want to give a number. <laughs> I don't want to give a number, but it hasn't been very many. I well, just heard his dad say, use the stick and then double it. So expect it's going back to the jab here. And there it is. Double the damn body. Now he calls for the body. Flores is hit. Listen, Flores is hit Ruiz so much to the head. He got to be careful that he doesn't bruise his hands or hurt his hands. <laughs> I'll tell you, it is great. We've said That's this now a couple happens, times. Tess. Week number two of having this fanless atmosphere. But the audio that we get with the trainers is wonderful. As you can hear the coaching in real time. Sometimes we like just sitting back and listening yeah. to what the trainers are saying throughout the rounds. Ninth round here as Gabe Flores is looking to bring this thing in for a nice landing towards a victory. Run his mark to 18. No, stop, stop, stop. Not had the answer tonight for the athletic and skilled unbeaten 20-year-old from Stockton, California. Let's go. Scored the knockdown round two and has controlled throughout. There you go. You hear that? There you go. Gabe Flores Sr. in the corner. And no, 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 stop, you, stop. listen, great audio with this fanless atmosphere. So let's take time to listen in to Moro Jr. Fernandez in the corner of Ruiz and Dad in the corner of Gabe Flores Jr. Stop, stop. <laughs> Hey, you gotta catch some of that encounter. Stay tight, catch and shoot. Stay tight. 
Stay tight. In between, boy. In between. Tight. Hit the gas now, boy. Hit the gas. There you go. Pick it up. He's just trying to land something big. Catch it and then counter. All right, Timmy and Dre, give me your take on what you heard from Gabe Sr. He's telling him right, Joe. He, he's, you know, he's trying to get his son to close the show strong. It's hard to argue with him winning every round, but that's what a good trainer does. He continues to ask for more from his fighter because he knows that, hey, we're fighting Ruiz tonight, but as we step up the competition, things are going to get a lot rougher. Timmy says hit the gas, pick it up. Final 30 seconds of round nine. Yep. Hit the gas, pick it up. I like that. You know, he can really do a lot more damage, but he's just not comfortable inside the pocket. Until then, we'll see. He's not fighting at his full potential at this moment. He's still young and still climbing. Tenth and final round. Timmy, I want you to continue on with where you were going, where you see room for improvement for Gabe Flores Jr. Because unless something goes off the rails here, he's going to be heading towards a unanimous decision win. It'll be 18 and 0, but you want to see him stop moving on the outside, get into the inside, and be a little more comfortable picking it up at range on the inside. That's exactly right. Exactly right, Tess. You know, he can operate outside beautifully, yes. You know, mid-range, he's a great counterpuncher, but I haven't seen him sit still inside the pocket and, you know, and let Ruiz work. Let him open himself up to catch him with the hard shot that he don't that you wouldn't see. You know, until then, until then, Tess, he still got work to you know he still got work to do in the gym before he can step up and face any of those guys or any of those champions. So Dre, how does he go about making that improvement and taking that next step forward? What Tim's looking for? The gym, the, you know, and I think based on what we've heard his father say and what we've heard. Flores Jr. say they are working on it, but you'll work on something and it won't show up until six months, eight months, a year later, and it'll come when you need it. So good shot right there from Reeves. But the fact that they're working on it, they're mindful of it, that, hey, he needs to develop other aspects of his game, that should be encouraging if you're on the team of Flores. Ruiz able to land that right hand moments ago. Remind all Manuel Navarrete will be in action Saturday night from Mexico City as no, no, Mexico no, no, stop, stop. City is also going to have a fanless atmosphere for fights that get going this weekend. We'll have that coverage on ESPN. And if you're winning every round, how do you know when it's time to step it up and press the issue. Well, if you have an opponent like Ruiz who's doing the same thing round in and round out, yes, he's still dangerous. Yes, he's still looking for a big shot, but he hasn't changed up his game. That's when you know it's time to go in there and press him and touch him to see if he can take the punishment. Now, if Ruiz was a guy who big shots were whizzing past Flores's chin every round, and you could just see Ruiz setting something up, no, you need to box, keep your defense tight, and let's go home with a, with a decision victory. That's not the case tonight, so I understand why Flores Sr. wants him to step up. Stop, stop, stop. No variation from Ruiz. The same thing, round in and round out. No, 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 stop. Ten seconds, boy. One last right hand for good measure, and that'll cap it. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside MGM Grand, after 10 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Patricia Morse, Jarman, Dave Moretti, and Steve Weisfeld all have it 189.
Declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Stockton's King, Gabriel Flores Jr. G Squad Nation's gonna be celebrating again. 18 and 0, we will hear from Gabe Flores when we return. Stick around.